Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the morning session after a marvelous dinner, uh, so to say, the zombie session. Um, I hope that there will be enough visitors because, uh, or spectators because uh, it will be a very interesting session. It will be led by Kyung Hu Lee and myself, Michael Felsberg. And um, we start with the first paper. Uh, it is actually the honorable mention one of the honorable mention of this conference. So it's a very exciting paper. It's by Yu Xin Wu and Kai Ming He, and the title is Group Normalization. Please. To present our work, Group Normalization, I'm Yu Xin Wu, and this is a joint work with Kai Ming He from Facebook AI Research. <laughs> to give some background, we'll start by looking at batch normalization. Batch normalization is a milestone technique in deep learning. In this figure, we plot the image net error rate of the best network architectures every year. All the red dots are networks without batch norm, and all the blue dots are networks with batch norm. We can see one thing from this figure. Everyone nowadays is using batch norm. In fact, batch norm has become an essential component of every CNN architecture since it was invented in 2015. It has made deep networks more accurate and also much easier to train. Let's briefly review what is batch norm. Here we draw a four-dimensional image tensor as a three-dimensional cube, where n stands for the batch dimension, c for channel dimension, and the two spatial dimension, h and w, were put together. Batch norm takes a subtensor of shape n times h times w across the batch dimension. It computes the mean and standard deviation within this blue subtensor, then it subtracts the mean and divides by the standard deviation. In other words, it normalizes subtensor so that it has zero mean and univariance. This is the core idea of batch norm. It normalizes across the batch. Despite how successful batch norm is, the use of batch has also become a source of drawbacks. Sometimes you may have to use a small batch size, for example, due to memory constraints. This is quite common if you want to train large models or train on small devices in fact, many computer vision applications such as detection, segmentation, and video classification are typically trained with small batch size. As we can see from this figure, the error rate for batch norm increases a lot when trained with smaller batch size. Another category of problems that could come with the use of batch is the varying batch problem. It means the concept of batch can be varying in different scenarios, and we will cover this later in more details. In this work, we propose a new normalization method called group normalization. The key property of this method is that it's independent of the concept of batch. Therefore, it does not have the issues that come with the use of batch. Unlike batch norm, whose error rate increases for small batch size, group norm's error rate remains stable when trained with small batch size. Now let's introduce our method in details. Group normalization takes inspiration from the traditional hack feature, which was widely used in object detection before deep learning. Hack feature vector is obtained by first computing a histogram of oriented gradients within an image patch. Then it concatenates several such histograms across spatial blocks into a feature vector. Therefore, by construction, the feature vector is naturally group-wise. Each histogram is typically normalized independently to have the same scale. Therefore, the feature vector is effectively normalized within each group. Similarly, we do not have to look at deep CN features as a black box vector. The deep features can also have this internal group-wise substructures and it will make sense to normalize within the group. Therefore, we first split the feature channels into groups, just like what group convolution does. Then we compute the mean and standard deviation within each group and normalize the tensor within the group. The normalization makes each group have zero mean and unit variance. Group norm is closely related to many existing normalization methods. Layer norm normalizes over the channel dimension as well as the spatial dimensions. 
Compared to group norm, we see that group norm becomes layer norm when you put all channels into one group. Instance norm normalizes over the spatial dimensions only. Therefore, it can be considered as a special case of group norm when each group only has one channel. Instance norm and layer norm are the same thing when there is only one channel. And finally, batch norm becomes instance norm when there is only one image per batch. A difference, however, between batch norm and the, the other three methods is that group norm, layer norm, and instance norm are all batch independent, as can be seen from this figure. They do not normalize on the batch dimension. Next, we show some experiments on image net classification. In this experiment, we use a standard ResNet 50 model with a standard batch size of 32 per GPU. We simply replace all the batch norm in the model by the other three normalization methods. And we did not change any hyperparameters or training settings. Here we plot the validation error curve during training. The horizontal axis is the number of epochs, and we can see that the error rate is decreasing during training. The standard training protocol decays the learning rate at the 30th, 60th, and 90th epochs, which leads to those sudden drop in the error rate. From this figure, we can see that group norm's performance is very close to batch norm. And also, it performs the best among all the three batch independent normalization methods. As we mentioned earlier, group norm becomes layer norm when there is only one group, and we can explore other number of groups. Here we plot the final error rate with different number of groups in the group norm, and we use the same number of groups for all the group norm in the model. We can see that layer norm already has a very good performance. In fact, it's not widely known that layer norm can perform reasonably well on ImageNet. However, we can see that any of the group norm models has a better performance than layer norm, even with only two groups. This suggests that the idea of feature grouping is effective. Among the other choices, we empirically found that using 32 groups gave us the best results. Therefore, we use this hyperparameter for all the other experiments. Next, we show experiments with the same ResNet model, but smaller batch size. Note that when we change the batch size, we also scale the learning rate linearly. Batch norm performs very well for a regular batch size, as we have seen. However, its error rate increases significantly when the batch size becomes smaller, and it ends up getting 11% worse when the batch size is 2. On the other hand, group norm is unaffected by the change of batch size. And it's surprising that the training curves for different batch sizes can even match each other. This shows the stability of group norm on small batch size. We have talked about the small batch issue. Let's look at another category of issues that we call the varying batch issue. It means the concept of batch can change among scenarios. For example, as you know, batch norm actually has inconsistent behavior in training and testing, primarily due to the fact that there is no concept of batch in testing. There is also an inconsistency between pre-training and fine-tuning because of the change of batch distribution. In fact, people often ask how to deal with batch norm in fine tuning because there are many reasonable things you can do. And in some other applications, the concept of batch itself may be ambiguous, especially in a complicated network. And one example is the backbone and head network in object detection, which we will talk about now. In object detection, the concept of batch caused some other problems, and group norm can be very helpful here. We first review a standard mask RCN pipeline. A mask RCN consists of a backbone network, which performs per image computation. It is typically fine-tuned from a classification model, and it extracts features from each input image. It crops hundreds of regions from, uh, then a head network performs per region computation. It crops hundreds of regions from each image, and it runs a CNN on each region. The backbone network is typically trained with a batch size of one or two, which is not desirable for batch norm to work well. 
It's also loaded from a pre-trained model trained on a different data set with a different batch distribution, which may also be a problem for batch now. The concept of batch caused more problems in the head network because each image may have different numbers of regions it's even unclear how to define what the batch is. We typically consider all the regions cropped from the images to be in the same batch. Then the batch will be highly correlated because many regions come from the same image and they have overlaps. And we know that non-IID batch is also a factor that could hurt the performance of batch norm. Group norm is independent of the batch. Therefore, it does not have the same issues, and it performs better as a replacement. Now we show some results on cocoa object detection. The standard mask RCN baseline with ResNet 50 and feature pyramid network has a 38.6 AP. We obtained a 0.9 improvement by only adding group norm to the box head network. Adding group norm to head network and the backbone network further improve the AP by another 0.8. Same as before, we have done no hyperparameter tuning. We just directly adopt the standard training recipes that were actually tuned for batch norm-based models. Also, we want to note that group norm is used by this year's winner of the COCO challenge as well. Another interesting finding with group norm is that group norm enables us to easily train a mask RCN from scratch. Historically, faster RCN and mask RCN systems need to be fine-tuned from ImageNet pre-trained models. This is primarily because batch norm has the issues we mentioned, and without batch norm, it can be very hard to train a deep network from random initialization. However, with group norm, it turns out that training from scratch is very easy. In this figure, we show the baseline models using group norm and pre-training from ImageNet. With the same amount of iterations, we are able to train a mask RCN from scratch, and the AP is very close to the one with ImageNet pre-training. It's only different by about one point. Finally, as a teaser, some ongoing work affair shows that even without pre-training, it is still possible to reach a very high AP using larger models, group normalization together with some other techniques, and more details will come soon. In conclusion, we propose group normalization as a batch-independent alternative to batch norm. Through our experiments, we show that some form of normalization matters, as it helps optimization of CNNs. But normalization on batch may not always be ideal, especially in certain scenarios. By splitting channels into groups, we can perform normalization on groups, which turns out to be more effective than some other batch-independent normalization methods. This is the presentation. And thanks, everyone, for listening. And if you want to know more about the details, please come to us to the poster session this morning. Our code is available as part of the Detectron platform. Thanks, everyone. Time for some questions. Yes, just the crunch floor. Uh, here, here in. Hi, uh, very good work. So, a diff different layer of the network, you have different number of channels. So, have you ever considered different group sizes, different layer? Yeah. Um, we have done two, two experiments. One, we, uh, in one experiment, we use the same number of groups in all the layers. And in another exper experiment, we use the same number of channels in each group, uh, in each layer. Uh, the details number in the paper, and what we have observed is that um, most types of group normalization have similar performance. Yeah. So uh, here in the middle, in the second floor. Um, okay, uh, yeah. So, so uh, in your paper, we can see that only the convolution plus the uh, group norm. So for example, in ResNext, there's a lot of people using the group convolution. So do you have any insight if I use group convolution with group normalization, should I match the group number, or is there any insight on it? Yeah. 
Uh, we have tried group, uh, group norm on REST next. Uh, and we have tried different combinations of like we try to match the group size or not match the group size, we uh, see similar results. Yeah. One last question, and please, in the meantime, the second speaker, please. Uh, so people have found it's hard to get a batch norm working in uh, deep RL problems because of the non-ID batch. Um, have you tried the group norm on some uh, deep RL problems? Uh, what's your experience? Yeah. Um, Actually, there are two types of problems with RL uh, for batch norm. One is the non-IID batch because the samples come from recent experience. And another is that you're using batch norm in test mode to generate data. And because the data distribution is changing and using, uh, using batch norm in testing mode will require uh, using the mean and standard variation of your uh, data set, which is also changing. That also creates a huge inconsistency between training and testing. So uh, yes, we have tried group norm on some uh, standard RL problems, and we see that it also can perform well. Thank you to the speaker and uh, the audience.